Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brother's Creed Podcast, where we inspire fathers to build the blueprint for the next generation. We are the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we have a conversation with podcaster, speaker, coach, father, father, Brian Ward uh, from the Dad Up Podcast. Uh, it's a great conversation that he, Brian talks with his whole podcast he's been doing for five years. He talks with folks, uh, fathers and even some mothers about fatherhood. Uh, and about how we can be better dads, which is what our podcast is, is about too. Uh, our our podcast is uh, centered in kind of building those uh, creed attributes of your creed and those uh, virtues that help you become a great dad. Uh, and his is right along those lines as well. So it's a great conversation. We talk about a lot of different things, give examples of good fatherhood, bad fatherhood. I share some uh, m- millennial uh uh, movie references <laughs> at one point, uh, but it's a great conversation, and he's a, a great guy, and we're glad to have him on. So let's go ahead and jump into this podcast. All right, let's do it. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave in close of day. You should be a monster, an absolute monster, and then you should learn how to control it. No retreat. No surrender. You can't conceive of what I'm capable of. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. What we do in life that goes in eternity. All right. Today we have with us Brian Ward from Dad Up Podcast. Thank you, Brian, for coming and being on the show with us. Uh, guys, I'm telling you, I've been looking forward to this for a while. So I appreciate you both, not only for what you guys are doing, uh, but also um, for the podcast, get spreading the word. I mean, this is, you know, it's Brothers Creed, but you guys are all about fatherhood. And anytime I run across other guys that have fatherhood parent, uh, podcasts, uh, it just helps build the strength of fathers in the area. And I, I have to tell you something. I've had people that have said, why do you go, why do you go on other podcasts, parenting podcasts? That's, that's like your competition. Like, no, it's not. We're all in this together, man. I'm yeah. Yeah. trying to help each other out. So thank you guys very much for having me. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's, uh, we, we've, we've had lots of different podcasters on and, and I am uplifted by their message and there's certain things that we have, a, you know, a little bit of a different bend on things. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, fatherhood, but uh, our podcast is a little more focused on like building virtues with kids and like your, your podcast is probably along the similar lines, but maybe it's just a little bit of a different flavor. And so like there's everything coming together creates a great, uh, a great synergy and you learn things from different people. And I just love it. And at the very, at the very least, I love talking with the other interesting people that are interested in things that, that I'm trying to strive for in my own life. So uh, yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so dad up, podcast um I, that's how, how did you how did you get there how did you kind of where, where did you start from and i mean where, where did the name come from obviously when you're talking to someone and you're like hey you need to dad up you know that's <laughs> kind of what i think of like you man it's, up it's kind of like up. man up but dad up how, <laughs> how did you get there so that's how i came up with it man up <laughs> dad up so uh my older son was in college at the time my younger son was a senior in high school i had been uh like an just an all in dad at everything they did, whether it was sports, I coached all their teams all the way up through high school, uh, whether it was parent teacher conferences, field trips, I mean, all those things, I was there. And when my younger son was about to graduate high school, he was, he was approaching his, his in the end of the year. I, I'm not kidding you. I got scared. I like, I had, I got in serious anxiety uh, I don't want to quite say depression, but I felt like this sadness in me because I literally felt like my fatherhood journey was coming to an end. Like my boys are about to go off on their own. And I'm like, that's all I've known. Now what? What am I supposed to do? And don't get me wrong. I was looking forward to being an empty nester with my wife. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, that's all I know. I, I know to just be a dad. And now I don't know where I'm supposed to go next. And I was talking to... um family members, a brother of mine in particular. And he said, uh, he goes, Brian, you have always been a phenomenal dad. You need to try to help other dads. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, how should I do it? Like coach? And he's like, yeah, maybe eventually, but 
how about a podcast where you're just interviewing other dads and their experiences and maybe you'll maybe you'll touch somebody out there that's going through the same experience yeah. and i thought all right i'll give it some thought i talked to my wife and she's like definitely you have to do that and so that's kind of how it started and then i just i had knew nothing about podcasts maybe listened to a couple and uh i just reached out to a couple of podcasters said how do i get started they gave me some tips and strategies and stuff and then the name uh i had about 10 names i've had my list narrowed down to about 10 names uh well, one of them was dads are us and my kids said no 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 don't do that uh, so i ran the names by my by my family my two boys and my wife uh and the the man the dad up came from the the meaning of man up and we say that to guys you know hey do man up and uh so that's kind of where it came from and my boys and my wife were like yep that's the one so that it. is in a quick story how how the data podcast got started and there's a slogan you know for dads about dads being dads <laughs> but it's crazy i have had moms on my show uh yeah. and my audience right now is is uh 60 dads and 40 percent moms wow so even though it's a dad podcast it's really a parenting podcast that's really what it is and i like i said i've had my wife on i've had my sister-in-laws on i've had um uh, reality stars on. I've, I've a lot of different moms that I've had on my show. So, um, it's always good to get their perspective too. But, um, yeah, I think, that's how I think the journey any, got started. I think any, uh, any dad would think that, uh, would agree that a, a good partner and a mom is, is important. And any mom would agree that a good, strong partner and a dad is, is very important as well. So, um, I think it's an amazing effort. Uh, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, I, I think that what you're what you just mentioned is something that's really important. I think that there's a lot of podcasters and influencers out there right now where they it, it they're in this kind of man uh manliness or you know manhood podcast sphere where they don't really talk about women at all uh, in fact, they leave being a good partner or, or a good husband out completely uh It's something that it's bizarre that I've been kind of watching. Over the past, I don't know, since we've started a podcast where I've seen probably three f or to four different major influencer, guy influencers uh, who have gotten divorced. Uh, their marriages yeah. have crumbled underneath them because of uh, their own egos or because of mm -hmm. alcohol or, or different things. And I'm kind of like, guys, you're, you're kind of missing the point. Being a good, uh, 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 a masculine man, being a good f uh, dad. A lot of these guys don't talk about fatherhood, but you know some of them do. It's about also being a good husband uh, and, mm -hmm. and caring about your wife and being a good caretaker or, or a partner to her. And uh, I feel like that's left off a lot, uh, which is probably why there's having a lot of issues. So uh, I appreciate you mentioning that because I think that's so important uh, to, to bring up. Yeah, I um, I agree with you. And one thing that my wife and I, you know, been together over 27 years. And one of the things that uh, we focus on as a couple is is each other. We focus on each other a lot. Um, we actually have a marriage coach that we go and see every other month. Uh, and we see her because not because we have problems, so we don't have problems. Uh, uh, it just kind of makes sure that we're still in alignment with each other. Um, we have discussions, sit down discussions where just her and I, we have our we have this certain uh, thing that we do almost every night where it's a, it's a marriage book that we read out of. She reads one chapter. I read I, we have our same book. She reads one chapter. I read the same chapter. We're quiet. We sit there and read and then we close it up and then we talk about that chapter. Um, so we do things like that. But the um, you know, it's important because you're right. If you don't have that, what I call the foundation of the husband and wife, it's going to be very hard to have a very good, successful um, parenting journey uh, with kids if you if you don't have that 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 good background or that good uh, foundation. Yeah, I just I'm just thinking if my wife and I read a chapter at the same time, she'd finish in about five minutes, and it'd take me about thirty. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens for me too. <laughs> um, I guess one thing that uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on, and this actually wasn't one of the questions we had kind of sent over to you is that fatherhood has changed so much uh from you know when i was being raised you know my dad you know maybe that boomer generation you you seem to me you know you said your kids are grown you strike me as probably gen x uh but 
you, you mentioned how involved you were with your kids in field trips, P, uh, you know, uh, parent teacher conferences, uh, all through all these sports. Uh, I would, th- I, I, it seems that like more fathers these days, especially that, you know, millennial fathers who are, are more of the fathers, uh, nowadays they're becoming much more involved in the mm-hmm. raising of these children which i think is a fantastic thing uh you know you know back in like what the 50s or, or 60s and 50s and 60s it was just like your wife's you know at the hospital giving birth and you're uh you know at the bar doing whatever you know it's just like oh whatever uh or you know or you don't even know you don't even change a diaper ever uh and so i feel like in, in many ways fathers are more equally yoked now uh to their wives it's more of a partnership than just like a uh, you know, you do you do the children thing and I'll do the money thing. Uh, it's more of a partnership. Uh, and so fatherhood has changed quite a bit. Uh, and I imagine that on your podcast, you get some very different. And this, is, this is the question to you. you get, do you get some very different sentiments about what fatherhood is or what being a good dad is? You know, some dads might say, hey, for me, being a good dad is being at all my kids plays or being at all my kids sports teams. And other dads mm-hmm. are like, hey. I'm only going to be there if they win, you know, because I'm not going to have a loser in my house. You know, some dads are like that. So how do you what kind of stuff do you hear on your podcast? Yeah, um, what's interesting, and I agree with you, I, I see fatherhood, the the role of dads changing in that they're starting to become more and more involved. And I've actually seen it over the last maybe five to 10 years. I've kind of seen it. and it's a slow been a slow shift. Like we were used to be called babysitters. That's what dads were. We were the babysitters. So we would go out and work all day, mom stay home. And then the weekends the moms are like, we have shop, I have shopping to do. I got to groceries. I got to do this. You stay with the kids. All right. I'll, I'll babysit the kids. I mean, that's <laughs> how it was. And now that sh- that is shifting where you're seeing a lot more dads be involved. And I think not, I think one of the reasons is because we see what's happening in the world with kids. They're growing up. And if the fathers aren't involved, the statistics on the things that they get in trouble with or the things, the paths that they go down yeah. uh, is it, it's it's bad. It's detrimental to those to those kids. So, yeah, the, the dads are starting to become more involved. Now, I've had dads on my show that from the onset of the social media, they appear to be great dads. Right. And, uh, that hasn't always been the case. I have, I have interviewed guys going, oh, he's, he's posting all this stuff with his kids and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I got to help this guy on. I put him on and all he wants to talk about is himself. That's it. All he wants to talk about is his business. All he wants to talk about is the things he's doing. And I kept having to try to lean, you know, gear them back towards their kids. Uh, so that's, that's hard when I come across people that I think, you know, social media is, it's not everything. It's not the whole story, right? You see all the good stuff on social media and the behind the scenes stuff. Maybe dad really isn't involved. He's posting a picture because he was, he spent time with his kid for an hour uh, in the last month. So he's posting that picture and we're like, Oh, wow, good for you, man. You've been a good dad. And yet the rest of the time he's, he's non-existent. Yeah. Um, I also think that dads carry a lot of weight on their shoulder. They have a lot of, uh, you said ego, uh, some dads are like that, but I think dads feel a lot of pressure to be the provider for the family. So if you have a, somebody that's a dad that's, you know, working his corporate America or something, and he's got to work 60, 70 hours a week, uh, he thinks that he has to do that in order to be a not only successful businessman or business person, but also a successful uh, parent or husband because he's providing for the family the way that he should. So I try to tell dads, you still can do those things and still be completely involved and completely active because I worked in social, uh, in, in corporate America and I've coached every single one of my boys' teams. I was at all their stuff. And so I've been a successful dad, a successful husband and successful in my business career. So I've done it. So I know it's possible. You just have to make that mental shift and be ready for it. If you're wanting to be a good dad, then you have to make that decision. You have to make that shift. You have to sacrifice in other areas. I'm not rich. I'm not rich, but I don't, I'll I'll give you an example. I bought my first car three months ago, brand new. My first brand new car, brand new, three months ago. And the reason I did that is because both my boys are grown. I'm not having to provide for them anymore. Like my wife and I were very good about our boys come first. And if we have to do without our own personal needs or wants, because we want our boys to be 
to, to get the things that they need. Uh, that's, that's how we were. Um, so it's, it's tough because you, you interview some of these dads and it's like, Oh, I want to strangle your neck. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had you know? a, <clears throat> about, uh, 10 years ago, uh, when my oldest, uh, I have four kids, Jared and I both have four kids. Um, when my oldest was just a baby, I had kind of had one of those pivotal moments as a new father when I, I was at church one day. Uh, it was just just a normal Sunday, and my son, was who was maybe a couple months old at the time, started crying. And so I, I took the baby up, and I, I, I took him out into the hallway so it wouldn't be disturbing. Well, there was another dad that was out in the hallway, and he had probably a two- or three-year-old. And I knew that he had a couple other kids as well because I, I, I knew who he was. And, and I walked out in the hallway and I was holding the baby and the baby was crying. And I looked at him and I said, I said, oh, you're on babysitting duty, too. And he looked at me and he goes, it's not called babysitting when it's your own kids. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. And then Ins- we just kind of went to foot and mouth. Yeah, yeah we just kind of we just kind of <laughs> went on. You know, I kind of walked past and we kind of went on. But that has always stuck with me. It, you know, it's not babysitting if it's your own kid like that. To it's me, called fatherhood. <laughs> yeah. That to me was like, uh, it was almost like this, this, uh, this air of responsibility that came upon me now towards just like, Oh yeah. Like this is, this is real. And the baby was only like a month or two old. And so yeah. it's just like, wow. Okay. I had this kind of this mantle of fatherhood that I felt like I came upon me at that time. And I always look back at that and I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's not babysitting when it's your own kids, you know, and, and, and that's a lot of th- things that I do. It's not an obligation. It's not, you know, it's you, you made this choice to have kids and it's your responsibility to um, and your privilege to enjoy the process and to create good people through whether yeah. you're teaching. So you're an example. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I have I have to oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I have to tell you two stories because that um, it just kind of hit me when you were talking about that. I had something that happened just today. Uh, we were uh, getting ready to we leave Arizona. We were do, uh, doing a little bit of shopping and we we're standing outside of this Lego store in the mall. And this dad and this girl, she had to be three, maybe four, maybe. She wanted to go in the Lego store so bad. And the mom was walking right there and he, the dad's holding her hand and she's pulling away and she wants to go in the Lego store. He's like, no, we're not going to the Lego store. No. I mean, he is like, I looked at my wife. I said, I'm about to punch this dude in the throat. He was yelling at a little girl in the mall in front of everybody. No, no, you're not going. And then he said, we're going. And he turned her around and literally put his leg on her back to push her along going, come on. And finally got to a point where, where he picked her up and the whole time that he's holding her, he's like, no, you're right. I mean, he is snapping at this kid and she doesn't understand that. She's three years old, four years old, right? Uh, We're walking along and I I wanted, my wife's like, Brian, just take it easy. Uh, And you're like, here, here's my card. I'm going to dad up this guy. (laughs) Listen to this guy. And uh, he made this comment that I was just like, what? He goes, looks at his wife and he goes, I hate kids that can't talk to me. I'm like, wow, you hate kids that can't talk. Wow, dude, I, I'm like, I want to take, I want to take that little girl from you, man, because yeah. that is just some, that's some crap. I had another incident in an, uh, in an airport where I was sitting, we were waiting on a flight. There was a flight delay and I saw two different dads going this di- completely different direction. I had dad in the business role. He's there with his family. I could tell he was on vacation and he's on the phone with a business call. His little kid kept coming up to him and he was literally like pushing the kid away. Like, and they li- he just wanted to show him something. The dad, the kid just wanted to show him something. He's literally pushing the kid away, completely ignoring him, completely ignoring him. And, uh, the, he didn't like, like if I was a dad in that situation, okay, I'm in a business call. I'd say, son, give me one minute. Let me finish this business call. And then I'll, then I'll, then you have all my attention, right? If it's an important business call. Yeah. He was completely ignoring this kid, pushing him away. And I was just like, <laughs> again, I was, I, <laughs> and then I saw uh, uh, just a few, uh, maybe 10, 15 yards away. I saw this other dad who was running around with his kids, playing with them, keeping them entertained, like the complete opposite. Like I was loving what he was doing. And I was like wanting to kill this other dude. <laughs> uh, and it just, you know, listen, everybody's going to make mistakes. Um, 
it's hard. It is hard to be a dad, but uh, I think it's rather easy if you put your time and effort into it. It actually comes pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that, you know, how a lot of times people will say, oh, the media, you know, they're or television and movies and stuff. They're, they're such a negative influence. I think in, in a certain situation, I think that actually the media and movies have actually influenced me for good. Uh, I, and I think back to a lot of the movies I watched as a kid. I think about all these deadbeat dads who I never wanted to be like, like the dad from Santa Claus, uh, like, uh, or like, you know, like Tim Allen, right? Yeah. Or uh, like the dad from Elf or Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. <laughs> or yeah. uh, what was it? Uh, Getting Even with Dad or uh, The Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> You know, there's so many movies where these these deadbeat dads. You, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard the song "The Cats in the Cradle," or yep. about the you know that that song. I love that song, and I think that I've like as a kid, I was exposed to a lot of these. Like, I mean, even as an adult, you know, just thinking about this stuff. There's a country song by I think it's Tim McGraw. It's called "Drive," uh, where he it's well, he talks about his dad taking him on a drive on a boat as a kid, and then how. Later, you know, he drove in a truck, and then now he drives with a Jeep with his daughters. Uh, I love that song, and I love just the the emphasis on fatherhood. And in those movies, obviously, there was like a deadbeat dad, which oftentimes at the end of the movie, they kind of come around. Uh, but you talked about earlier about dads that work 70 hours, you know, and they're always, you know, crazy busy. Oh, there's another, another Christmas one, Family Guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. with Nicolas Cage. <clears throat> it's just like, for me, like... Every all this all this other stuff is um, my, my legacy is not necessarily the work that I do at work. You know, if I die, they're gonna have my stuff boxed up in, in probably twenty four hours and just ship back to my house. And they're like, okay, let's find mm-hmm. a replacement at work. But the work that I'm doing here in my home uh, is critically important. And so, mm-hmm. if I'm thinking about like, oh, I need to stay late and you know, you know work. I mean, occasionally that will happen. But I, I really try to make time so that I can be there to do a stuff like on, for example, on, on Mondays, I usually go and help teach uh, my youngest son, my five year old. Well, he's not my youngest son, but my youngest son that does jujitsu. I help teach his class. I leave I leave at about four o'clock uh, from work to go help teach his class. And then I help teach the next class at five o'clock for my other son. Uh, and I just love the opportunity to be there to help teach their class and also help other kids, you know, and uh, it's just like. I can start work an hour earlier uh, or work through lunch uh, to be able to go do that. And so I think that, you know, it, it, you just have to have your priorities aligned and like what's really going to matter uh, in the long run. You know, if you have a, a bajillion dollars, uh, but you have no nobody that loves you, no family, is it going to make that big of a difference? So uh, that's uh, just something that you I could- think about. You, you have a lot of, a lot of debt. I'm not, I mean, look, I'm not against, you know, you going out and making a lot of money and doing, doing your running your business and doing the things that you need to do to make that kind of money. Yeah. That's great for you, but you have to also keep in mind, uh, what is my relationship like with my kids right now? Because I'm gone all the time. And I try to tell dads, I coach a lot of dads and I try to tell them, look, I know you have to work all these hours. I know you're trying, I know you're, you know, you're, you're maybe living paycheck to paycheck and all that kind of stuff. I get it. I, I understand that. I have respect for that. I get it. But you have to, on the times that you are home, because you are, on those times that you are home, even though you may have no gas in the tank, you may be on empty, you're still going to have to give out a little bit more to your family. Because the problems that you have as a dad away from your home cannot be brought in the house because your, your family didn't cause those problems outside of the home. And I tell dads that, listen, your legacy is not the business you're building. Your legacy is not the, the millions of dollars that you're trying or billions of dollars that you're trying to make. Your legacy is not the foundation that you're trying to get started. Your legacy starts in the home, period. That starts in the home. If your foundation is broken in your home, and I call our I'll call our family a foundation, if there's cracks in that foundation, it will affect everything else around the house, whether it's your relationships outside the home, your business outside the home, your health, it, it will affect all those things that there's any of those cracks that are happening in that foundation. So I tell dad, your legacy doesn't start trying to build that business. Oh, I'm trying to build it for my kids. No, you, you, you need to start your legacy in the home because your kids are going to remember it. 
Dad was never there for me. And now guess what? I'm 16, 17 years old and I have a major problem that I need a lot of help with and I'm scared and I don't know what to do, but I can't go to dad because he was never there. I don't, he doesn't know me. He does not know me because he wasn't there. And that's, Mm. that was uh, a scary thing for me. I grew up like that. My dad was a blue collar worker, constantly gone. Uh, I can remember on, I played a lot of sports. I can remember on one hand, how many sporting events they went to my mom and dad. And I used to ride to practices and games with my friend's parents because my parents, now they were working, they're blue collar workers. They, they worked a lot of hours, but I mean, the, I, I had a, I had a wrestling match. One of my, my parents came to my wrestling match on a Saturday. I had two tournaments that two wrestling matches that I had to do. The first one I did, a, I wrestled, I won. I had to wait about two to three hours for my next match. And my dad's standing there and he's mad. He's like, what are we doing? And I'm like, I have to wait for my next match. And I, I'm, you know, my team's going right now, but I've got to wait for my next match. And he's like, I'm not waiting for that. Come on. What? What? I can't leave, Dad. <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. We're, we're out. We're out. I'm not standing around here for three hours. And he made me leave. I had to go tell my coach I was leaving. And he was like, what? We're going to have to forfeit. I'm like, I, I, my dad's making me leave. Oh, geez. And I, I, w- I was in high school, and I still remember yeah. that. And it's that kind of thing that. The, the times that you don't spend with your kids, I mean, imagine this, you guys, do your, your kids play sports? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So what sports do they play? Basketball? Seasonal. <laughs> yeah. Soccer, swimming. Um, but my kids do jujitsu. Um, and then occasionally, you know, soccer or basketball, depending on the season. Okay. So you take soccer or basketball, for example, and you guys, you guys have to work. You guys have a major project you're trying to get done. And it's the one game you're going to miss, but you're like, I, I, I'm sorry, honey. I have to be here. I've got to get this done. Um, and then your son makes his first three point shot ever. And you weren't there to see it. I mean, how does that, like, I would be devastated if I didn't see that, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I, it's I, just, I, I, I agree with your Sam, but I think I'm going to push back a little bit and just see what you have to say. Just because I I think that we we can't set up an unrealistic expectation. I think that there's a lot of pressure, especially for myself. I feel a lot of pressure. Like I don't want to waste this time with my kids, right? So and I got four boys, so I'm constantly like trying to do everything. Sure. So if I'm const, if like I have this crazy heightened level of like I don't want to miss out, I don't want to miss out, to where I would be devastated if I missed a game, obviously I would be sad if I missed a great shot or a great goal. Right. But like, I think that that's why you have two parents, right? So mm-hmm. that my wife can be there to cheer them on. I don't always have to be there. Like, for example, my wife took my, well, one of my older sons, not the oldest one, but the next oldest, uh, he's eight. She took him to, to Denver to visit her parents this past weekend. It's like, he's having experiences. My wife's going to take my oldest son, uh, to, uh, Harry Potter world later in the year because he read all the Harry Potter books. And so, I'm creating these experiences. I, I'm 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 kind of earning money so that we can afford these experiences. But she's going to do these things. I don't. I feel. I don't feel like I always have to be there, to to create to enjoy that with him, because my wife is there. We're a team, and I can't. If I if I guilt trip myself every single time, I'm not there for one of my four kids, who's there's like an infinite variant of things that they're doing. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I would. My personality is such that I would really beat myself up if I held myself to that kind of a standard. Um, so I, that, that's how I would push back a little bit. I obviously want to hear your I, thoughts. I, I totally agree with you. And I'm not, I'm not for any dads that are out there watching this. You're, you're like, yeah, Brian, you're, 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 you're a nut job when you think that kind of stuff, because no, I'm not saying that that's not, that's not the case. I mean, that does happen. That is, that, that's reality, right? Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that in the times that you are there, it has to be completely like, you have to be all in. The yeah, times don't be like on you your dev- phone when you're watching the game. Right. The times that you're devoting to your job because you're trying to work money, you're working on a project, you got a serious deadline you got to meet, you're not thinking about anything but that project. You're like, boom, boom, boom. I've got to focus on this, laser focus. I'm going to get this thing done. When you want to, you know, you got, you got an ailment that you're dealing with. You don't just deal with it. You go to the doctor. I need a doctor to help me out, right? You go to the gym. You want to work out. You're focused at the gym. But when you're with your family, yeah. you need to be focused with your family. Because it may be those times where you're not around a lot, a lot, uh, a lot. So you have to make sure that that time you are there is really focused on that. Yeah. You have to make them feel special when you're around. Yeah, yeah. totally agree. Wanted to get your thoughts on, on one other thing that we've talked about a lot on the podcast. Uh, something that we've, uh, 
I've I've implemented in my family. I don't know if you've done this in your family, but uh, there's like a, because I have four boys, it's it's really easy to spend time with them collectively. Uh, we can mm-hmm. go to something collectively, but I feel like there's a, such a need to spend individual time. So mm-hmm. one thing that I do is I, I have a I call it a special night, uh, but once a month uh, I spend an individual time with each one of my kids, uh, just doing something special for maybe it's, it's like an hour, you know. So mm-hmm. my my five year old he really wants to go in the backyard and shoot BB guns. So we'll go in the backyard and shoot BB guns, and then he wants to do jujitsu moves. Uh, so we'll do that for a little bit. Uh, my oldest son he really wants to play Risk. So we'll play Risk one evening, or, or, or I'll watch him, help him code one of his things, he, games he's coding on the computer. So it's taking time, at least just an hour, to spend individual mm-hmm. time with your kids uh, is so important. I feel like to give that individual attention as opposed to just collective attention. And when you have a lot of kids and you're giving collective attention, uh, you know, people can, you, you often just kind of get the most attention to the one who's hitting the most or, or whatever, or one who's the loudest. So that's the way that I've found to kind of give that love uh, uh, intentionally to each of the kids. I wanted to hear what your thoughts are about that or if that's something you've heard about or done before. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've done that. Uh, and I'll give you an example. I have uh, one event that I do with each one of my boys. Uh, and I only do it once a year, but it's, you know, kind of a big deal. Uh, and my older son, it used to be uh, as he was growing up, it used to be Magic Mountain. He loved Magic Mountain. So it was just me and him. We would go spend the whole day at Magic Mountain, just the two of us doing that kind of stuff. And then as he got older, it started to become more about sports and doing those kind of things. You know, I take him to the Patriots game or, you know, out here when they come out here and visit or we go to a college basketball game or something like that. Um, So we do that. We're doing that every year. My younger son, he is a diehard. It's because my wife's from Boston. He's a diehard um, Red Sox fan. Diehard. Like he watches their regular season games and I think they're boring. But he will watch every single game. But every year they play the Angels out here in California. And every year it's, you know, usually a three game or four game series. We, uh, me and him, we go to all games. We go to every single game. And what we do is I, he and I go to the first one. We go out to dinner. It's just the two of us. We watch the first game. The next game he goes with his brother. So the two of them go. And then the last game, all four of us go. So two boys and my wife and I go. And we do that every year without, we've done it for the last 15 years. And it is a blast. When the Red Sox played that. the Dodgers, uh, I, I was, when they went, when they played the Dodgers in the World Series a few years back, I've never been to a World Series game. And I told my wife, I said, it's going to cost us about 1800 bucks for two tickets. Uh, and I think I'm going to pull the trigger because this might be a once in a lifetime opportunity for yeah our, our son to go and uh she was surprisingly on board she's like you need to do it so we did i mean we they were nosebleeds but they were right over home base <laughs> nice. and we had a blast and it's something that we'll never forget right yeah. so yeah. yes devoting individual times yeah four is going to be a lot you know you've got to really you've got to schedule your time you have yeah. to schedule you absolutely have to put it on your schedule Bo- two boys is a little bit easier but i am absolutely 100 percent in support of that I think traditions are important, right? Traditions like the mm-hmm. baseball game or, or, you know, kids look back and they say, oh, yeah, I remember we used to do that. Or I remember we used to do that. And I think it's important to kind of uh, form that types of traditions with your family. Yeah. Um, well, and, and they carry it on. They do carry it on. Yeah. You know, my boys, I mean, I coached, like I said, I coached all their sports from age four all the way up through high school. And both my boys... Now, when they have families, they want to coach their kids. And that was just something that they were so used to and, and they want to do it for their own families. So uh, it, they just they carry that kind of stuff on. Yeah. And so, Brian, you've kind of told us about your uh, your, your kind of fatherhood and some of your strategies before the podcast. Um, and then within the podcast, you've had the opportunity to talk with tons of fathers and and. Uh, maybe even refine the craft a little bit more. I'm sure that you've learned a lot of stuff along the way. Uh, how has your experience with Dad Up Podcast made you a more efficient father? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, similarities to a lot of the uh, 90% of the dads that I interview are great dads. You get a couple that are just like, eh. But uh, the ones that are really great, there's a lot of similarities in what they have 
And that is, uh, I, I noticed it. They had a lot of patience with their kids throughout their whole lives. I did not, I was not that dad. My, my dad, my parenting journey wasn't always that great. Um, I was, you know, I spent four years in the Marine Corps. I like, don't put up with BS. Like I'm, you, you're going to do, it was the way I believed it. It was my way or the highway kind of attitude. And there was times when my boys were little that I used to, I, I didn't, wasn't like abusive, but I lost my, I lose my temper and I would get upset and I would, you know, I was that dad and my wife would have to keep me in check. She'd be like, you need to step away and let me handle this. And so I had to learn that over time, but I've noticed a lot of dads have that where they have this, this kind of this patience with their kids and, and their demeanor and how they talk with their kids about different topics or issues that they might be going through. And it's really cool to see that a lot of dads are, you know, are doing that. Um, and I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's uh, trying to think there was an example I was going to give you and now it just like flew out the side of my head. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's, a, no, it's tough, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I, I have patience. a, I have a thought. It'll come back to me. No, yeah. no, it'll come patience. Back to- no, I, I think that's great. Uh, just kind of, you've seen a lot of that patience as you've kind of been talking with a lot of, uh, fathers and exploring more. That's important. To yeah, know. One thing and, that we- and I, I did, I do remember the two things yeah. that I want to tell yeah. you. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. just popped up when you said that. Um, I had one guest on my show that he said, he made a comment to me and it was something that I've never heard. Uh, and it was something you guys have probably heard it by now, uh, but I talk about it a lot now, uh, is that kids spell love T I M E. And I hadn't heard that ever before. And this was a couple years back, but he made that comment to me and I'm like, bing. I'm like that, that is a fan- phenomenal statement. I've never heard it. And I stole it from him. Uh, and I use it all the time. Um, I had another guy on my show, uh, that said, you know, parents come into this parenting journey, not really knowing how to be parents, right? No one teaches us how to be a parent. So when you're a parent, uh, when you're in school as a child, right, you get the lesson and then you get the test, right? But when you're a parent, you get the test and then you learn the lesson, right? So it's those kind of roles are are reversed. So uh, those are two statements that that have stuck with me for the last three or four years that I've heard uh, I've heard dad say, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. I think that, uh, I like the first one, uh, you talked about that's w- w- like the kids, uh, spell love time, uh, because that's, and that's why I try to spend that individual time because I feel like they really feel it the most when I'm individually spending that time with them. Uh, the second one you mentioned, uh, I've heard that anecdote before where it's like, Hey, there's no manual for parenthood, that kind of thing. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, personally, I feel like that is a little bit, um, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a little bit of, uh, of something that a parent would say who doesn't really care that much about parenting. It's so a like out. it's a cop out. Yeah. So like someone who's listens to your podcast, someone who listens to our podcast, someone who's reading a, a book about fatherhood, someone who's seeking these things out though, they're seeking out the lessons to learn how to be a good father. Mm -hmm. They're not just like, well, I guess I'll learn one day. Uh, You know, so I think that when they say like, well, there's no manual for raising kids. Yeah, but there's tons of people out there that are giving great advice. There's tons of podcasters. There's books. There's, you know, you know, psychiatrists or or, or parental, uh, you know, coaches and all kinds of things. And that's what's changing now. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying over the last five, 10 years. That's what's been changing. And one of the, yeah. And I, I, I agree with when that, it comes yeah. to the parenting manual, I think there is a parenting manual out there. And I use this example. Exactly. Uh, not a lot of people like to hear me say it, but we have a parenting manual that everybody gets when they become a parent. And that's the Bible. If you follow the things that the Bible preaches, that will help you become a parent because the Bible talks about us following what our father, father teaches us how to be as, as people when we, you know, as we go through life and that kind of, it goes along the same lines as a parent. So I believe that the Bible is that first parenting manual. It's just people don't, don't read it. Yeah. And I think what kind of what you were saying too, Jared, yeah. is that, you know, yeah, you can read all the books and stuff like that as well. But a lot of times with kids and what I've noticed is that sometimes things come so fast that it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, like sure. sometimes yeah. it comes, you know, like situations come up and you're like, I don't even know, like, <laughs> 
you know, my, my son will do something. I'm just like, I don't even know how to react to that. Like I didn't, <laughs> right. I didn't read that or hear about that on the podcast. Like, you know, I got a call from the, you know, when my son was uh, like eight years old, I got a call from the principal. Your son pulled his pants down on the bus. It's like, okay. <laughs> 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 what do I, I do he's, he's he's eight bro <laughs> yeah it's like what do i do if about he's 16 that? that's a different story yeah so and so you know yeah that was the first time i had to kind of react to that situation and and kind of dig into the repertoire of like okay well do i go with this like you know angry and stern and don't do that you know this or do i kind of go in more investigative and be like, well, why did you do that? You know, or do I just go in loving and teaching and say, Hey, you know, that's not appropriate. That's not something we do. And so there are some situations where you can't really plan for them. You just kind of, you, you, you do take the you, test after the, the, <laughs> yeah. the oh, yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, you, yeah. or you take the learning after you, the, the test. Cause there's been a lot of times where I look back and I've been like, ah, I shouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a better and way that, to do it, but, that's but exactly I think it's a I mixture mean, of both is definitely good. I think approaching them with anger is not, I mean, it's just my opinion. It's not the right approach because yeah. they know they messed up and they're getting scolded not only by the principal. Now they gotta, they gotta come to mom and dad and be, yeah. uh, you know, scolded by them as well. I mean, listen, we're, you're going to, you guys are going to make mistakes. You guys, yeah. I still make mistakes to this day. I had, I had a little bit of an argument with one of my sons over the weekend. He was being just obnoxious. And I was like, dude, what in the world? And he didn't like me just asking him like, what in the world's going on with you? And he got started getting obnoxious again. And it was just like, that happens. You know, we have those, those times and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. going to happen. We're not going to get through this parenting journey perfectly. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, in that situation, I'd have been like, dude, he's eight. I'll talk to him. Relax, man. I mean, it's, I understand he's, he's wrong. I understand it's not appropriate. I get all that. I, I don't want him going down the wrong path, but I will talk to him and I'll get it handled. But here's the problem that's going on with society today, yeah. especially parents with kids that are in school, is parents are teaching, parents are coming to their kids' rescue too much. There are too many times when kids are not taught to take responsible responsibility for the things that they're doing or not doing, right? Yep. Yep. And you have parents that step in and the you know a kid will get a demerit because he didn't turn in his homework or because he pushed Billy on the playground or because he was fighting and took a ball away from somebody, he'll get a demerit or whatever they call him now. And a parent will go, well, my son told me, my son told me it didn't happen like that and he would never lie to me. Okay, your kid will never lie to you. All right, you can go ahead and continue to believe that. But you have too many parents that just try to step in and rescue their kids. And that's completely the wrong approach. You're setting them up for failure because when life does hit them on the chin, guess what? They can't come to mom and dad. They're asked, I shouldn't say that. Their butt's going to get fired, you know, <laughs> yeah, if they yeah. do something at work, you know, yeah. and it's, there's no mom and dad coming to, coming to help you. Yeah. I had a situation where my son sold his car. He had a brand new Camaro, had it for like three years. He's like, it's time to let it go. He wanted to buy a, a Tesla and he said, I got to sell this car. He took it to the dealership, sold it. And it took them like two months to send him his equity check that he made from the car. And he had been calling them and the guy was like ignoring his calls. And then he would call him. And I'm like, I wanted to step in and go, do you want me to handle it? Cause I yeah. will. And he's like, no dad, I, I, I He's 25, right? Yeah, yeah. No, dad, I'll handle it. I'm like, okay, but it's your money. It's like seven grand that he was waiting on. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. dude, that, that's your money. I don't want you to get taken advantage of. I would be more than happy to call the guy. I, I could get a hold of the general manager. I'll get a hold of the owner of the dealership. I'll be happy to step in. Yeah, yeah. But those situations I think are a little bit different because he didn't. he's never handled that situation yeah. before. And that was yeah. a lot of money, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but too many parents are stepping in and not letting their kid take responsibility. My kids yeah, always took I've responsibility. That, yeah. I, Oh, dad, I got in trouble. This teacher said this. He, they, they grounded me. They grounded me. They put me on the, on the playground wall for, okay, what did you do? Well, I did this. Well, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, own it, dude. You're yeah. on the wall for the next week. I mean, it is what yeah. it is. You'll yeah. learn this lesson. Don't do it again. Yeah, I, I think there's a dichotomy of what you just mentioned over protective parents, helicopter parenting. Absolutely. I think the other side of the other side of the extreme is like, there's a lot of parents that just don't even care. I remember when my kids went through this COVID thing, uh, when we went to like remote learning, some of the kids in his class and their classes just totally dropped off the map, never logged into anything, never saw them again. Uh, and then he's seen them in subsequent years, uh, but they're seriously behind. 
Uh, so there's a huge problem, I think, especially with like the inner cities where you just do have no parental involvement at all. And they're just like, well, let the, let's let the state raise my kid or let the teachers raise the kid. And what happens to those kids? They find yeah. other avenues to support them, right? If, if you're not stepping in as a parent and really providing the guidance and the structure and the love and the attention that they need, they're going to go seek it somewhere else. Yep. It could be little Susie meeting up with this, you know, a guy that's five time, five years older than her. It could be somebody that's finding meeting somebody online thinking that they're talking to somebody and they're really not, right? Yeah. A predator talking to a predator. Or a gang it could be, or hey, something. Yeah. Or, 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 it could be the, the local gang that, that lures your kid in and now he's part of the gang. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. I mean, all those different things happen if you're not engaged with your kid. My wife's a school teacher. She's been a school teacher for almost 20 years. She sees it all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, and as a basketball coach, I can tell you there were there were kids on my teams. I coached thousands of kids. There were kids on my team of parents that I have never met, never met. And I all I just hurt me because I knew those players are out there like little Billy's out there giving it his all on the basketball court, never met his parents. They don't come to any of the games. They don't come into any practices and he's out there giving it his all playing great. Yeah. And all he wants to do is look up in the stands and see his parents smiling or cheering for him. And he can't even do that because they're not there. Yeah. I mean, imagine sad. the effect on that. So he's got to seek that other uh, elsewhere. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, when you allow your, uh, the institution to raise your kids, then they will be in the institutionalized potentially <laughs> in the future. Yeah. I mean, there's exceptions yeah. to every rule, but uh, statistics show that uh, it kind of leans towards the other way. Yeah. yeah. Well, as we kind of lead up to the end here, I uh, wanted to ask just a couple more questions. What is, um, and this could be maybe from some somebody that you've interviewed or from um, your, your own experiences, but what is some of the best, maybe we've already talked about it, but some of the best fatherhood advice that you've ever received? Uh, everybody that I talk to talks about intentionality, right? Um, we have to make sure that we're being totally intentional with our kids. And that means you, one of you had mentioned it earlier about putting the phone down. You have to be very intentional with your kids. And I mentioned it to you, Jared, about scheduling your time, right? Scheduling yep. your time with kids. My wife and I sit down every Sunday evening and we map out what our schedule looks like. And when our boys were playing, playing sports, they were, I mean, they were playing they were far enough in age that they had two different teams that they were playing on. Right. Um, now I was a coach, so I could kind of back their practices up, but you have to be able to schedule that time. If that's not on your schedule, spending time with your kids, intentional time with your kids is not on your schedule. More than likely it's going to get missed because if you don't have, I mean, it's right. I mean, something comes up, you get completely distracted and you know, you had to had plans. You're going to spend time with your son on Wednesday, but now I've got to take care of this. And I didn't even put it on the schedule. So I completely forgot about it. But if it's on your schedule, it should be, it should be a non-negotiable. If it's on your schedule, it's a non-negotiable unless something emergent, some emergency happens. It's a non-negotiable. So one of the common things that I hear from a lot of parents is you have to have those non-negotiable things that are set you you take your kids out you spend time with each one of them individually every month that's a non-negotiable for you it does not matter what happens in your life that is something that you're going to continue to do that should be on your schedule every single week period and, and that's 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 one of the most common things is those non-negotiables no yeah and i loved what you said about in being intentional and that's exactly what i was kind of referring to earlier when i was uh when I was just talking about like people who seek out our podcasts, people who read resources, they're being intentional. And I think that those are, they're, they're like reading that lesson manual for, for fatherhood or for, or for parenthood. Uh, and I think that's what makes a good parent is just that intentionality of, of trying to go out and seek out how to be, how do I become a better father? I'm going to go try to find out, you know, I absolutely agree with that. Well, let me, let me flip, let me flip that question. What's one of these, uh, uh, fatherhood advices, <clears throat> excuse me, that you've heard where you're like, oh man, that's that's bad advice. Uh, <laughs> anything anything think, out there that you've heard? You're like, oh I, I, yeah, I wouldn't I, think, I wouldn't say that or, or I think I most of dads that wholeheartedly. Are, <laughs> most of dads are very careful with what they say because they're on a podcast about parity, right? So there might be some fabrications or you know, some they might be like embellishing a little bit on some of their stories that they might be telling. But um gosh, one of, ah, gosh. 
I, I, it doesn't have to be on a one. podcast or just like out there that you something that you've heard. Uh, I don't know. Or something that, that fathers do that you're like, hey, stop doing that. Yeah. Well, I can tell you one, one thing right now that comes to my mind when I think about it. It's not necessarily on a podcast, but it's something that I experienced watching other dads do. And it was something that we talked about earlier about them being so focused on their business and making money and have to be the provider for the family that they aren't ever around. And the excuse that I used to hear is, Brian, you can make so much more money than what you're doing right now if you just did X, Y, and Z. And guess what? You do that, you're going to retire. You can retire by the age of 40, and then you can spend all that time with your family. I'm like, my kids are grown then. Like, what are you talking about? Like, now I've missed their their whole childhood. Yeah. I've had I've seen dads that have missed birthday parties because they wanted to go on a business call or they wanted to go to a business meeting missing birthday parties like it just boggles my mind that that's the that's your mentality i would rather do without i would rather get paid a lot less and have my quality of my time with my family than focus on money and that be my main focus and i'll see i'll see my kids when they're 18 i mean they're just ridiculous some priorities yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. things, some things like that might happen, right? I've had situations uh, where things like that have happened if I'm on a business trip and I might miss something here or there. But, um, yeah, I think it's it's intention, being intentional and, and making sure that your priorities are are in line for sure. I, I'm not here to I'm not here to knock on parents that have, you know, that, that can't make everything. I get it. That, that happens. I mean, I understand it's life. Right. But you have to make sure that the times that you do have with them. They're 100% focused on them. You got to make your kid feel special. You got to make your kid feel loved. You got to make your fit kid feel like you are their guy, their role yeah. model, their hero. I mean, think how many kids have heroes or role models that are not even their parents, right? Want to be like Michael Jordan or, or, you know, at the time it was Kobe Bryant or, you know, all these guys. And it's like, I want my boys. I want my boys to see me as a hero. I want my boys to look up to to me as a hero and want to be a role model based on what I did for them and what I showed them. And uh, yeah, so I get it. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with what you just said. Um, I think it's so important. I want to. I want to ask you a little bit more about that. Just that last part that you said. You, you talked about being a role model. Uh, I think that in some cases. Um, and I know that you're a, a marathon runner, or at least you run, uh, from, from what I can see from your Instagram. Uh, so you uh, are someone who is striving to achieve personal achievements. I wanted, I was wondering if you could just speak with us for maybe just a minute about uh, the pursuit of personal achievements while also pursuing the achievements of your, of your kids. How much do you do on either side? I mean... If you're say, like, oh, I got to do this Ironman and you're training all the time, maybe you don't have time to go you know, to your kids' basketball games and to their soccer games. So what do you think that balance is between striking saying, hey, kids, look, your dad can do it and I'm being a role model versus and and, and then versus supporting them and what they can do? Yeah, um, well, I'll, I'll give you a little secret. There's no such thing as balance. When people talk about oh work life balance, you know, I'm gonna, you, there's absolutely no such thing because here's here's why: if you're focused on work, you're not balancing life right now. You're not balancing family time because your focus is there. There's no way they can be equal. There's no way because you'd be having to do both at the same time for it to be equal, right? Uh, so my, that's my big that that I truly believe that. So when it comes to me, yes, I've ran I've ran a number of marathons. I'm training right now. I've got three more marathons this year. Um, I, and the reason that I do that is I take care of myself, my, my health. I take care of, uh, me mentally. Uh, I do a lot of, uh, meditation. I do those things, uh, for me, but also for my family. So I can become a better person for them. I'm always looking to be just a little bit better each day. And when it comes to my running, yeah, it's tough. I've got to devote a lot of time to running. So I'm up at 4.30 in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning and going for a run when when everybody's still asleep. That's what I used to do. When I was coaching their sports and I had a, you know, working in corporate America and I had this eight to five job, I went to my boss and said, listen, I've got coaching coming up here. This is the schedule. 
And I'm going to be here for the company. I'm going to do what I need to do, but I'm going to have to leave at like two o'clock on these days. And my, I always had situations where my boss would be like, you know, what? no problem. I know you do your work. You're all good. Just do what you need to do. But if they had told me, nope, absolutely not. You need to be here. We need you here till five o'clock, maybe even six o'clock. I'm sorry. We, we, you just can't coach. I'd have been like, all right, then I'm out. I would have left. I would have been, that's it. Yeah. And I had to, I had to, uh, sacrifice other areas. And for me, it was sleep, but I used to get up at, uh, four o'clock in the morning and go into my office at my job into my office because I knew I had to leave at one or one or two o'clock in the afternoon to, to get to, to go coach a game. So I would get in, get up and get in the office at four o'clock. And that way I'm devoting a hundred percent of my time to my job. They're not getting anything less out of me. And then when two o'clock hits, now my family's getting a hundred percent of my time with them. Um, so it's just all about the little sacrifices that you have to make. We, we, we just got back from a trip, uh, in Arizona and I had to do two runs on those trips. And the first run I did was on Saturday. It was a little seven miler that I had to do. And I told my wife, Hey, you know, my boy, my one son was at his house sleeping. My younger son, he was still out. I said, Hey, uh, this will take me an hour, a couple hours, one and a half hours, something like that. I'll be back in plenty of time for us to go to breakfast and, and do the things. She's like, go, just go do it. Yesterday, uh, today, I got up super early before they were even up and went down and jumped on the treadmill and ran four miles on the treadmill. So then when I came back to the room, they were awake and I showered and we left. I mean, they, those kind of things where I'm like not taking away from them, uh, but it's important for dads to understand you have to make time for yourself. You have to, because if your cup, I talked about it earlier, if your cup is not full, there's absolutely no way that you can be all in 100% and give everything you got to your kids. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be worn out if you do not take care of your own health. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, I think that many ways, like, it, it's like, I feel like, you know, my dad raised me and he wants me to achieve things in my life. And so if I'm, you know, at the prime of my life and I'm like, well, I can't achieve anything because I have to teach my kids to do stuff. That doesn't make any sense. It's like my dad wants me to achieve and I want to achieve and, I, and I, uh, things. And I think it's important for me to model that to my kids, that it's not just about teaching that next generation, which is important, but it's also about mm -hmm. achieving things that you want in your own life. And so right. your kids can say, hey, I remember when my dad did this, that and the other, and it took courage for him to do this or that. Uh, and hopefully you can bring your kids along for the way, uh, which is you know, something that that's why one reason why I like jujitsu is because I can do it and I can do it with them. And mm -hmm. heck, we can all go to a tournament and I can watch them go and I can coach them and then they can watch me go. And so it's kind of like a, a unique thing where everybody can do it. Uh, unlike a you know, soccer team or whatever, you know, most adults don't play, you know, professional so uh, like in a league or anything like that. But uh, so it's kind of a cool thing that uh, we've kind of found and settled on that uh, is, is a great way for all of us to kind of see that accomplishment of each other. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that is a uh, uh, one of the reasons why I used to coach uh, or why I coach their sports because I have to take them to practice, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got to I'm going to take them to the games because I'm going to watch the games. Why not get involved? I might exactly. as well just yeah, get involved. Thing, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I just I remember my young, young my older son was signing up. We were, I went to sign him up for Little League. Had no intention on coaching. Sign him up for Little League. I've never coached in my life. And uh, the guy says, uh, "Hey, you want to coach?" And I go, no, man, I want to coach. I'm good. I, I'm, I just want to watch my boy. And he goes, oh, we need coaches. You don't have to be the head coach if you don't want to, but you could be an assistant coach just to help him out. I'm like, dude, I don't know anything about coaching. And he looks at me and he goes, bro, they're four. They're going to play with grass. So you need to just go and just teach them how to run a base and catch a ball. That's it. You're going you're gonna to be fine. And so I ended up not being the assistant coach. I ended up being the head coach and I never looked back. I was the head coach forever. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I get to be there and participate with them, but now this gives us an opportunity as father and son to kind of hang out together and we got to do these things together. So, yeah, for sure. Well, I love it. Um, the last question, Brian, that we always ask, uh, to our guests here on the podcast is about, uh, your personal creed. So a, a creed is a set of, of beliefs or, or principles that guide your actions in life. Um, that's kind of what our whole podcast is based off of, right? A brother's creed, Jared and I trying to build our own personal creeds so that we can uh, help our, our children to 
um, just kind of grow and be the best thems that they can be as, as we are trying to be the best us that we can be. So was wondering, you know, sometimes a creed is a maybe a scripture or a quote or a, a, a topic or something, but I was wondering if you could share even just a little piece of your personal creed with us. Yeah, um, it's not, it sh- probably should be a scripture. It's not a scripture, uh, but it's something that I have, I have heard um, over the years for such a long time, and it's something that I try to live by every single day. But my goal as a dad, as a husband, as a human being, uh, as uh, a follower of Jesus, my goal is just to get 1% better every day. That's it. That's all I need to do. If I know that if I'm getting 1% better every day, can you imagine where I'll be a year from now? That's the kind of that's the kind of mentality that I play with. I have to make sure that I'm a little bit better than I was yesterday. Uh, and so I focus on that a lot. And, and there are days that I that I mess up and I, I own it. You know, like I didn't I did not I did, I did miss this. I didn't do this. I've got to fix that. So next tomorrow, I've got to make sure I better than I than I was today because I didn't I took a step back. And so I constantly focus on being one percent better every day because that's not a whole lot. That's not a whole lot. And over a course of a year, over a course of five years, if I'm really focused on that, imagine if people were really focused on that, imagine where their life would be. Just getting 1% better every day. Thousands of percent better. <laughs> a whole new person. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, that's great. And you, can, you talked about that over the lifetime of your, being a father. You've become a, a, a much better father than you were when you were much younger. And people have said to you, hey, you're a great dad. You should continue this. And so you've, yeah. you've created the podcast and you've continued that legacy of, of, of being a good, caring, loving father uh, to others, and uh, which I think is great. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So for, for our listeners out there, uh, Brian, wh- where can they find you? Uh, well, the best place is uh, Instagram, Dad Up Podcast. Uh, they can find me there. I respond to all my DMs. Unless you're going to send me a weird DM, then I'm not going <laughs> to respond to you. But all my DMs... I- I respond to, uh, you know, commenting and on the posts and stuff. I always respond to people. I, I believe in that connection. I believe in that networking. Uh, so that's the main place. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. I'm on uh, TikTok. I'm on all those other places. But Instagram's my main spot. And then I have my YouTube channel that that posts all my uh, my podcast episodes. Uh, but yeah, if I mean, if you want to reach out to me, I, I have a gal that handles all my email stuff. Uh, she takes care of all that back end stuff where I don't have to focus on it. Uh, I have an editor that takes care of all my editing and stuff. So all I have to do is when I do a podcast, I just send him the clips and he just does everything for me. So it saves me some time. Uh, yeah. It costs me a little bit of money, but I think my I, my my time is much more valuable than the cost than a cost of uh, what I'm paying them. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, my da- uh, my email. I mean, you guys, I think you guys know it. Data Data Tribe at Gmail. See, I don't even remember. Yeah, no, we can we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Data Tribe at Gmail. Uh, if you have questions, but DMs. If you send me a DM, uh, I look at all those. I always look at DMs. So if you have a question, uh, want to know something, yeah. uh, need. Uh, anything uh I'm, I'm always there and i know your podcast is at least on apple uh, apple podcasts i'm assuming it's on spotify and other platforms as all everywhere iheart amazon spotify uh apple um it's everywhere nice well guys, you just go yeah. on you just go on you just go on the internet and you you type in you know, <laughs> data brian ward or, or data brian it'll pop up excellent it's, it's there no, hey, we love it. And, and we appreciate you coming on today, Brian, to chat with us. I, I just love hearing from a, another dad who's focused on the same things that we're focused on. And uh, sometimes I have ideas in my head about things I'm thinking about, things I'm doing. And I, I was loving just bouncing some of those ideas off of you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great to talk to another someone else who's in the same mode that I'm in and to really see uh, – Maybe if you have an enhanced idea of, of what I'm doing or if you think what I'm doing is, is good, but it could use this or that. And so I think you've given some great uh, – some validation for some of the stuff that I'm doing today, but also some great ideas on things that I could do new. So appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, to all of our listeners out there, uh, we always uh, end with the charge. And we want uh, to you to know that this is a, a journey that all of us are on together. Jared and I and Brian, we're all trying to to dad up, right? We're all trying to to be the best that we can. So 
um, you know, to, to all of our listeners out there, let's build that creed together. Thank all you, right. Brian, for coming on. Yeah. Let's do it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You guys rock. Really do. Appreciate it.